Hi everyone, Vincent here. Today I wanted to talk about BSD. So the BSD, or uh, FreeBSD specifically, and the Berkeley Software Distribution, which BSD is a, a FreeBSD is based on, is a open source operating system that used to be based on the real deal Unix. That would be you know, one of the real deal Unixes, which was the Berkeley Software Distribution. It was rewritten into a completely open source code base with the same compatibility from what I understand. And now we've got you know, Unix like OS technically because it's not Unix certified. But that being said, now instead of having that, we have this Unix like operating system. And one of those that is based on the Berkeley software distribution BSD is FreeBSD. Out of all the BSDs, in my opinion, FreeBSD is the preferred one for me. It might not be for you. There's OpenBSD and NetBSD and things like that. BSD's got a good network stack, which is nice. Uh, BSD is got something called ZFS or ZFS, depending on what part of the world you're from and how you want to pronounce that. Either way, it's a file system that allows for a lot of cool stuff. And honestly, I have to say, I am not an expert on ZFS, so I apologize in advance for not knowing what I'm talking about. But it does seem like it's pretty powerful, the little bit I've read about it. It's got a lot of data protection features and things built into it, designed to prevent you from losing data and corruption and things like that, which is, who doesn't want that, right? In addition to all of that, you also have some other really cool stuff with the BSD family of oper operating systems. For one thing, where it's used is interesting. Because it's under the BSD license, most of them, not all of them, what happens is, I think some of them may be on MRT as well, but the thing about those specific operating systems is, because they're open source without using something like GPL v2, you don't have to open source your changes. So somebody like the uh, Sony company might produce a product like the PlayStation, which they have, by the way, the PlayStation runs FreeBSD, and then they don't have to release their changes. Now they can, but they don't have to. So this can be something that for companies could be interesting. Now for the open source purists out there that really want everything to be open source, having it be you know, a selling point to you, but to companies it is. In addition to that, another thing to think about with the BSD uh, OSs is they're not like Linux exactly. You know, they're similar in some ways. They, you know, a lot of times have the same shells. So for example, on FreeBSD, I can use Bash just like I can on Ubuntu or CentOS. But at the same time, there's a tiny little problem. A lot of the tools that you're used to with Linux do come over, but not all of them. For example, package management tools like Yum and Apt are generally not on the BSDs. In fact, I don't know of them being on any of them, but maybe they are. So that means that you are in a situation to where you pretty well have to learn some new tools. For example, in FreeBSD to install packages from the command line, you can either use the port system or something called PKG. I personally like PKG, it's pre-compiled stuff. So you can do like, for example, PKG space install space nginx. And that should get you nginx, for example, if memory serves. So you can do that. Now talking about GUIs on FreeBSD, in my opinion, Linux is better at this because when you look at the BSDs, for one thing, a lot of times it seems like, the, at least FreeBSD, they were shipping a little bit older versions of things like KDE and GNOME than something like Ubuntu would uh, in the same, you know, around the same release time. At least when I tested it a few years ago. Granted, I haven't done GUI stuff on BSD in a long time. Um, so because of that, you know, you're gonna be running a little bit older, you know, GUI stack of things, you know, uh, older X server more than likely and older desktop environment version. but you may not care about that as long as it works. You know, I care about Linux for the desktop for another big reason, and that is the amount of applications available. If you look at BSD, it doesn't have quite the application support, especially from proprietary apps, as Linux does, right? Like you can get o OBS Studio and like Chromium and things like that on FreeBSD, but you can't get Google Chrome you can't get, um, let's see, what else can you not get? You can't get something like DaVinci Resolve on it like you can on Linux. There are certain applications that you can't get on there. So because of that, you are limited in what you can install, even more in my experience than you was on Linux. And Linux, you know, I love Linux, but if you need certain applications, they're just not there. You know, but it's got a bigger application support than the BSD does. For example, any application based on Electron JS which is something that Slack and Discord both are written in, you can't run it on FreeBSD. They don't have an Electron.js um, runtime, if you will. There's a build thing that you have to run the application inside of, if you will. That thing is not got a binary that's available to put on to a BSD system. Now it's open source, so you could maybe build your own thing, but I don't even know how good the support would be. It's based on Chromium 
and Node.js, and in theory, you could get both of those to work on BSD uh, and, and make it all work. I think, uh, actually, on the Node.js side, it's already got a binary available for FreeBSD. But anyway, the point of the matter is, what I'm getting to is, there is limited application support. Now, on the server side, you could use it for servers. You've got, you know, database servers are on there, web servers are on there, things like that. PHP's on there. So, depending on what you're doing, that could work. I would still rather use Linux, but I will say this. I think you should at least try downloading it and giving it a try. And, uh, you know, do what I did, you know, a few years ago. Play with it in a virtual machine. And if you don't like it in a virtual machine, then move on. Um, one other issue that I will bring up here, too, is on FreeBSD, the hardware support, I haven't really actually tried to install it on, on bare hardware ever. I've only used it in virtual machines over the years. So, you know, if you're trying to install it in, in hardware, I don't know how well it's going to work. Um, you know, in theory, it should work, right? Um, in theory, it should. One more thing, talking about the BSDs uh, that's interesting that it's based on PFSense, which is an open source router firewall system. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, before you leave, I got a, a couple of updates for you, though. Update number one. I do a weekly radio show, a little, or not radio show, a radio segment on a local radio station here, Radio Lex, uh, WLXU-LP, so it's a, low, it's a low power FM. That station, uh, like I said, I do a segment called the Open Source News. On that segment, I do, you know, a very short, the longest episode that's ever been released was like three minutes and something. The shortest has been like 40 seconds. So I'm now doing a podcast feed of those episodes and you can go and listen to those and when I release a new one every week, you will be able to download that. Again, some of the episodes are really short. In fact, they lean on the short side because I only usually do like one or two news stories and I'm just quickly summarizing them. It's something that you could be driving to work or home and listening to on the radio and be able to, okay, get the gist of some of the cool open source stuff that's going on in the world. So, you know, it's short, but if you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description for that. It's not in the podcast stores yet. It's only got an RSS feed. I'm going to submit those later. Uh, one more thing that I want to bring up. I, I know I promised I was going to do weekly Open Source Tonight episodes again. Uh, unfortunately, um, my life's been really busy work-wise. As much as I love these videos, they're not my day job right now. So, you know... Um, I don't know when the next video will be. I don't even know when this is going to go out when I have time to edit it. Anyway, everybody, thanks for watching Open Source tonight. I'm Vincent. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you again very soon. Goodbye, everybody.